Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Am I the A-Hole. Story 1 is by one fox 96 Am I the A-Hole for not wearing a bra to my friend's wedding? I'm a 23 female and I have small boobs. You can't tell if I'm wearing a bra or not in most tops, so when I can, I don't wear a bra as I find them uncomfortable. My friend Kate, who's 25 female, is getting married and asked me to be a bridesmaid. I accepted, and then she texted me privately to ask if I could wear a bra for her wedding as she doesn't want me to flash someone. I tried explaining to her that the bridesmaid's dress she had picked out had full sleeves, so you wouldn't be able to tell as the material is also very thick. Kate got really mad at me, and my sister said maybe I should just suck it up and wear a bra. I find it to be a weird, invasive question, as you literally can't tell if I had a bra on in the first place or not in that dress, and I'm sure no one over there is staring at my chest. I normally advocate for people wearing whatever they want, especially in the comfort of their own home, but if this is at somebody else's wedding, and it's a friend of yours, is it really worth destroying the friendship to just not wear a garment for one night? I'm going to let one of the commenters actually explain what I agree with entirely on this, by Freya Sunshine. If she's bringing it up, maybe it's more noticeable than you think. Is this really a hill you want to die on? She's not asking you to color your hair or hide tattoos. Is this worth threatening a friendship over? If it's too much of a burden to you, take it off after the ceremony and photos. Soft, you're the a-hole. I tend to agree with this because... (laughs) Women, even flat-chested women, look like they're smuggling raisins or smuggling Tic Tacs underneath their shirt at times. It's not all the time, but there are times if it's cold, so it's not unreasonable to wear a bra at somebody else's wedding. If this was her telling you at home that you should wear a bra, unless it's her home and you're not paying rent, I would say wear one for the ceremony. Our next story today is by Neat Climate 133 Am I the a-hole for refusing to be adopted to present this nicely packaged story to my young step-siblings when they're older. My dad got married to Eve last year. Eve has two kids. Her son is four now and her daughter is two. There's a lot of deep stuff in Eve's background and in these kids with their paternal side of the family. But they really had nobody other than Eve until my dad and Eve met. Once they got married, my dad adopted them. Then, my dad's relatives didn't want the kids to be treated the same as the rest of the grandkids and told dad they would never mean as much to them as the rest of the biological family would, so he told them to get lost and cut ties with them. When all three other sides, dad's Eve's and the kid's paternal side, were basically not in the picture, dad asked my mom's family, my mom died when I was two, if they would embrace my step-siblings as family and treat them the way they would me, because they were now my siblings and my family and I love them, so it was important for me to see them being embraced by the family. My family actually asked me if what dad said was true and I told them it wasn't. I said I hardly even knew the kids, let alone loved them. My family told my dad they would never see my step-siblings as their grandkids. I should also maybe make it clear that my dad and maternal family did not remain close or like family after my mom died. I still saw my family, but my dad was never involved and he would go to his own family when I was with mine. I never liked my dad's family, so it was never a huge deal to me to not see them, and it's not a huge deal to not have them around at all. They were always really annoying about how girly I am, and they could never believe that I want to have a manly job when I graduate. Eve was pretty depressed when she realized she hadn't made her kid's family all that much bigger, and that they had been rejected even more. So dad decided that we would be the tightest little unit and we would all choose each other so they would know they were chosen and loved despite all the rejection. My dad decided for this to fully work, I should let Eve adopt me. I refused without hearing anything else and I told him Eve will never adopt me and I don't care how much of a nice story it paints for her kids because I'm not doing that for them. He told me they are little and Eve said it would mean so much to them. Dad told me part of being a big sibling is putting the younger kids first. I told them the kids were never going to be my priority and I would never go out of my way for them like that. Dad offered a compromise then of me writing and signing a contract saying I would always be their big brother and I was so lucky to choose two awesome siblings which I said no to as well. Then the adoption stuff was pushed more. Eve tried telling me I would still be able to call her Eve most of the time, but just call her mom in front of her kids. 
Dad told me I was being selfish for refusing to do this and reiterated that the kids should be our priority. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole. In this situation, your dad and Eve are not trying to make the kids the priority. They're trying to make Eve's feelings the priority. Because this last mega paragraph that you wrote, Eve was pretty depressed when she realized she hadn't made her kids' family all that much bigger. I can promise you that the little kids don't care and will never care if you're part of their family. They're just, you are part of their family. You don't have to sign a contract. You don't have to be adopted. You guys are a family unit. And if that bothers Eve, that's tough. And them putting Eve's feelings of depression in front of your kids and trying to frame it like the kids really want this is, it's BS. And they need to get over it. This is not about the kids' feelings. It's about Eve's feelings. It's so obvious. Our next story is by Critical Hedgehog 79 Am I the a-hole because I left without saying goodbye after finding out about the inheritance? Am I the a-hole here? Was visiting dad and siblings in another country for the holiday, and I didn't say goodbye to my father or brother and his family after discovering they worked together to sign everything over to my brother and giving me and my two sisters 1% of father's assets. Was visiting family with my husband and children after having not seen them in almost two years. The day before we were scheduled to leave, I had to sit down with my elderly father to discuss his plans for his estate after passing. This estate, built by him and my mother before she passed four years ago, consists of eight figures worth of commercial and residential property. He said he would give me and my sisters some cash, 1% of what the properties are worth, and give everything else to my brother since it's tradition. We are from a Middle Eastern background. My brother did work in the family business since college and has also benefited greatly from it, living in a multi-million dollar home, etc. The biggest part of the portfolio, a strip mall, was because the previous owner was a friend of mine who was also selling it and decided to sell to my family because of our friendship. My sisters and I, who are older than our brother, worked alongside our parents during the building of their businesses and during lean times. We did the grunt work as preteens and teens. Additionally, we did a lot of the caregiving for our mother when she was suffering from a terminal illness that robbed her of all her body's ability. I am shocked and dismayed to say the very least. I understand my brother helped in running the business, but he did more management, etc. Not anything customer facing or manual labor the way my sisters and I did. I understand that no one is owed an inheritance, but this is beyond the pale. We have been good daughters. Because I was so upset, I packed up my kids and bags and left without saying goodbye or anything. My dad got upset that I left without saying bye to her father. I do not believe that you're the a-hole in this one. I don't know every situation in your family, so I can't make a straight-up judgment. You say you haven't seen them in two years. Have you at least talked to them in these years since you've been gone? Because if you've been gone for two years and you haven't actually communicated with them at all, then it's completely understandable that he would give you less. But because he specifically said it's tradition, a lot of traditions should be changed and need to be changed. But unfortunately, it's unlikely that you're going to change it. Tradition is often a license to do the wrong thing to the wrong people. Our next story is by Rare Stretch 3814 Am I the a-hole for giving more money to my daughter than my sons and saying that my grandkids are not my responsibility? My wife and I have three kids. Boy 1, 34. Boy 2, 30. And girl, 26. As we have good careers, we were able to pay for all of their college tuitions, which varies on year, degree, and university. The three were all about the same age, no big changes. Our two boys decided to get a degree and to get to work. However, our daughter decided she'll do a postgraduate. My wife and I have decided to pay for that as well. We have always valued education a lot, so we think that if we can help, there's no reason not to do so. Our two sons are upset over the news. They think that we're spoiling our girl. Both of them said that they should get the same treatment, and I told them this is because their sister is choosing to pursue higher education than they did, so she should get more money. Our oldest said that's unfair, and instead of giving money to our daughter, we could start a college fund for our grandkids. I told him that absolutely not, because their kids are their responsibility just as my kids are mine, so I'd rather pay for my daughter than my grandkids. 
I'm not saying that because I don't love my grandkids. I love them with all my heart, but I don't think my kids should count on me to pay for their kids' stuff. My sons are upset. They're upset with me and my wife because we're paying for our daughter's college, and they're upset at me for my comment about their kids. They said that we're once again spoiling our golden children and that I'm picking favorites. Them versus their sister, my daughter versus my grandkids. It is your money. You can do what you want with it. It's as simple as that. A lot of grandparents do set up college funds for their grandkids, but your two sons are so irritated with the fact that she's getting more money for her higher education that they're coming off as the a-hole in this story. Them saying, no, you should take the money you're giving to your daughter and give it to our grandkids for their college is it's just absurd. It's your money. You can do what you want with it. Down in the comments by Icy Blueness 1206 Not the a-hole, it's your money and you're very clear in your reasoning. I would note though that this is the kind of thing that can start a major fracture in the family. Your older kids are acting very entitled, yes. I do wonder if some of that is out of fear. Their generation is facing a lot more obstacles to building wealth than your generation did and your sons may be afraid they won't be able to readily hand out money for school in the way you can. Equal division of money among siblings, however fair and logical it seems, can create a simmering kind of resentment that, I know from experience, can break things irrevocably. You shouldn't be held hostage by that, but I think it's worth considering. Is there a middle ground? Small amounts in 529 accounts or similar kickstart savings for the grandkids? Call it an early Christmas present. You're not the a-hole, and your children's children are their responsibility, but it might be a way to ensure that your sons don't end up hating their sister, which would be mean and unfair, but could happen. Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have an unbelievable...